some very interesting talks today, starting with two by uh, Klaus Stranigor. And uh, yeah, I'll let you introduce yourself. So please go ahead. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, very welcome, everyone. My name is Klaus Stranigor, and uh, I work at uh, the Department of Applied IT at uh, Schaumers University of Technology in Sweden, North America, Sweden, and also at the Philosophy Department at the University of Gothenburg. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to uh, give two short presentations, and the first one is about integrating symbolic and sub-symbolic reasoning. The other one is also about uh, integration. So um, let's start with this. What do we want? Uh, what kind of properties do we want our AGI systems to have? Well, probably a lot of them, but uh, here are two that are already causing problems, I think. They should be autonomous and they should be uh, versatile. They can do many different things. So I'll explain what I mean by those things. So autonomous means that the system mustn't be reprogrammed once it has been shipped, delivered to the, to the user. So that means, as far as I understand, that the reward system uh, is not going to change. Uh, after the, the uh, system has been shipped. So we're going to have to use one and the same reward system all the time. But on the other hand, uh, the user may train the system uh, anytime for specific purposes. So this is a bit similar to uh, a doggy that you can teach to um, train to, to fetch the newspaper, for example, then you use the existing reward system. You don't redefine or reprogram the reward system for anything else. You don't do brain surgery on your dog when you train it. Right? Okay, and another thing is that we want the system to be versatile. And uh, that can be decomposed into many different things. So we want it to support a lot of different types of learning. Um, for example, online learning, one-shot, lifelong learning, sequence learning, inductive learning, representation learning, or also called feature learning, supervised, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. There are probably other ones as well. So this is a long list of uh, desiderata. And uh, on the reasoning side, we also want it to be versatile. So we want it to support both symbolic and sub-symbolic reasoning or computing. And I'll explain a little bit what I mean by that. It's uh, basically the same thing as we heard uh, when John Lair uh, described System 1 and System 2. So here, here is an example of symbolic reasoning, for example. What is 36 times 3? So that uh, takes a while to, to figure out. And uh, if we look at computer systems for that, that handle uh, reasoning of that kind, it can be uh, usually uh, things like rewrite systems, production systems, theorem provers. And here's another question. Who is this on the, on the, on the photo here? Uh, that's when you you don't have to look very long if you recognize the person. Uh, you know it immediately. So this is an example of system one um, uh, reasoning or computing. Who is it? Do you know that? Almost. Villa the Kid. Um, so that's the type, for, for that, uh, for tasks like that, uh, completely different um, computer models are used. For example, deep networks, as we have seen lately, and uh, for other types of sub-symbolic reasoning, uh, reinforcement learning, for example. And <clears throat> this distinction, although it's a bit hard to define exactly, has been studied a lot uh, in many different uh, contexts by Kahneman, for example, as we heard, and uh, by uh, William James, uh, talked about associative and analytic reasoning, and it actually goes back all the way to uh, uh, Aristotle and Euclid, it talked about associative reasoning and axiomatic reasoning. 
So these are old notions. And as far as I understand, we are still facing the problem of integrating the two in a, in a nice way. Um, so here's a quote by three of the deep learning uh, founders. Okay. Ultimately, major progress in uh, artificial intelligence will come about through systems that combine representation learning with complex reasoning. So they said that last year, and um, assuming that they are right, uh, we still need to uh, do some work to uh, integrate those two kinds of reasoning. So that's what uh, we are trying to do. Um, and we are inspired by, um, by the sea turtles here. They are interested, interesting because they are uh, solitary animals, so that's the antonym to uh, uh, social animals, right? They spend most of their lives on their own. So they, um, they, uh, uh, they hatch, uh, they, they are, when they're in the egg, in, in, inside the egg, they, the egg hatches, and uh, then they make it to the sea, and they uh, swim away, and they never get to see their parents, and uh, then uh, when it's time to complete the, cir the circle, they go up to the same beach often and uh, lay their eggs. So somehow they learn to adapt to new environments uh, on their own without anyone there to show them, right? without anyone being there to show them. So how do they do that? Well, the turtles, they have uh, different needs. For example, they need glucose, water, and oxygen. And um, how do they know uh, the status of uh, those needs? Well, they have receptors uh, inside their body, interoceptors, that will tell them the, the levels of, of those uh, substances. And uh, when the levels get too low, they will be uh, prompted to take different actions to get the levels up again, for example, by eating, drinking, and uh, breathing. Okay, so the turtle has a number of actions at, at its disposal, so it can yeah, eat, drink, breathe, sleep, and so on. And to, be, to stay alive, it has to take uh, those actions uh, continuously, otherwise it will die, so it has to uh, satisfy those basic needs. So um, our system uh, is uh, inspired by that, and um, this is just um, an outline of some yeah, the main ideas that go into the system that we built. So um, the system uses a, a long-term memory for sub-symbolic reasoning and a working memory for symbolic reasoning. Um, and we use a special kind of uh, uh, network, homemade kind of network that we call transparent networks for, for modeling the long-term memory. And this enables us to develop uh, deep networks gradually in an, uh, using online learning, not uh, batch learning as uh, is the most common for deep learning. And um, all the sensors um, are Boolean, and some of the sensors are, are um, interceptors that will reflect the status of the needs. Um, and they are Boolean because we uh, imitate uh, neurons, and a neuron will either fire all out or not fire at all. So it's a zero one situation. And um, the environment uh, is more or less a continuous stream of assignments to the sensors those sensors that fire at a given moment. And then the system has one fixed goal that never changes, and that only goal is to survive. And it will survive by keeping its needs uh, satisfied. So we never change those goals at all. We never change the reward function. And, that's, and that, that was one of the requirements for an autonomous system. Okay, so now I'll tell you a little bit about how uh, 
memories are stored in the long-term memory, so in those transparent networks. Um, so they are uh, they can be used for expressing uh, uh, MDPs and uh, more than that as well. So for example, they can express sensory combinations like tastes, smells, pixels, temperatures, pressures, and so on. And they can also represent uh, sequences like text, music, um, motions, and so on. And um, we also, like in ordinary MDPs, we can represent uh, status changes like rewards of different kinds, how, how the different uh, uh, needs are affected by the transitions. And we make uh, predictions that when we are in a certain state, then we go to another state with a certain probability and keep track of the status changes there. Okay, so now I'm going to, instead of defining these networks formally, which is a bit boring, I'll give you several examples so you'll understand how they work, roughly. So here at the bottom you see uh, uh, six uh, sensors, and they are sensors for different kinds of tastes, like uh, low or high sweetness, sourness, and bitterness. And then we just make, uh, we add a few of those together, and that will be the characteristic of a certain uh, apple taste, for example. So the top node there will, will fire if we, if we uh, feel uh, uh, an apple taste. And here's another one. This is um, how we represent sequences. We use special nodes called delay nodes. And um, here we will, uh, we will perceive that the, the right uh, top node uh, will, will uh, fire if the sequence apple has been perceived. And we also have uh, motors, um, as in this uh, simple Breitenberg uh, vehicle where the sensors connect directly to the, to the motors. And here's another thing with, um, it's the same apple again that we saw before, the apple taste network. And then once the apple taste network gets activated, we can choose between two different actions, for example, spit out or swallow. And here we have a network that um, encodes a rewrite rule. So the lower network says that uh, well, we'll fire when, when uh, the, the, the sequence 3 plus 2 has been perceived. And uh, then one may choose the action to write uh, 7. And then there's a prediction that in that case we will also read 7. And that will happen with uh, probability 1. And the reward when we do that will be a point two or something like that. We were rewarded sometime a long time ago when we when we did that correctly, so that remains. So this is a way of uh, encoding rewrite rules, which are the key to uh, symbolic reasoning in our version. Okay, so zooming out now and looking at uh, the system components. We have the long-term memory we just saw. It's a labeled graph, and more precisely, a transparent network. Uh, then we have uh, an activation set, which will be a subset of the nodes, namely those nodes that are active at given moments. And we also have a, a status vector, which uh, measures the level of satisfaction of the needs. And that one will be a vector in uh, 0, 1 to the power of n that will be computed from the activation set. Um, so those are like gauges that uh, tell us uh, the status of the different needs. Then we have uh, one set called the attention set, and um, that's uh, a small set. It can consist of max one node, and that's the node where the attention will go. And we also have an action set, which also consists of max one node. So if we choose to take an action, and we do that by um, activating a certain action node. 
And finally, we have a, a working memory, which is a sequence of, uh, say, max seven uh, nodes. And each of these uh, components uh, has its own update module. So you see that this is just a, a, a purely mathematical thing. It's a, it's a labeled graph, and then uh, some subsets of that graph, basically. OK, and then we also want our um, model to have bounded rationality. So we, we use uh, fixed limits for the long-term memory capacity, like 10 to the power of 6 nodes, for example, and the working memory limit, as we saw, max uh, 7 nodes in that sequence. And we also use bounded time for our decision-making and for the updates in general. And the bounded time, the time available would depend on the status vector. <clears throat> so if we're in a desperate situation, for example, some, some gauge is very low, some level is very low, then uh, we have less time to, uh, to reflect. Okay, and then here are some uh, learning mechanisms, and uh, there are quite a few of them. Uh, but remember, we wanted uh, we wanted um, uh, our system to have uh, a lot of to, to meet a lot of the uh, desiderata, so that's why. So we have heavy learning first of all uh, at, that happens at random moments, and that will have the effect that frequently occurring sensory combinations will be remembered. And we also have emotional learning of state action pairs um, when they are emotionally, um, uh, yeah, in, in, in situations that are emotionally strongly positive or strongly negative. So in a, in a very positive situation, we, we want to remember it so that we can do that action again and get, get reward once more in the future. And if we get uh, a lot of punishment, we want to remember that too because then we want to avoid, instead, um, getting into that situation in the future, doing that action in the future. Okay, and then we also have imitation learning, so that stimuli such as words and um, melodies can be reproduced. And novelty learning, um, and special cases, uh, motion, so rewarded when, when we move, when stimuli change. And we have um, abstraction learning and compression learning that um, um, improve or generalize the, the structures that we have. And structure is, of course, a sub, is a subgraph, simply. And finally, we have forgetting so that we can remove emotionally irrelevant structures. So those are the basic uh, mechanisms that operate on the network. And, um, Together, these mechanisms will uh, cause the, um, the, the long-term memory to evolve over time. And uh, the result will be a, a, a deep, uh, transparent network. Oh. All right. Um, OK, so um, now we can uh, show how, how we do reasoning. And um, we have the sub-symbolic uh, reasoning here, and that will be just uh, uh, a path in the MDP. Remember that uh, the LTM here is, is also an MDP. So it would be like a plan. You go from one state to another using certain actions, and you keep track of the, um, uh, the reward that you get to the probabilities. And symbolic reasoning, then you can use the rewrite rules and um, replace content in the working memory instead. So you can do both kinds of uh, reasoning here. So this is the main loop, and uh, here it's, this is inspired by Dave Ah, the observe, orient, decide, and act loop. So um, um, yeah, observe, you read, read the input, and then you orient yourself uh, by using symbolic reasoning. So the first thing is to take in the input and then make an effort to compress uh, the input, compress the working memory. And that means doing a symbolic computation. And then the next phase is to decide um, what to do. And that's a planning process. And that planning process will use this um, compressed uh, working memory contents, content as, as its uh, starting point. And then finally, 
the act uh, uh, phase when uh, the selected action that was decided will be taken, if any. Okay, so we have uh, this situation here, like um, the turtle is, uh, is um, reflecting about uh, what to do by analyzing uh, an MDP. First it compresses the working memory content and then it plans for survival. It does that all the time. Okay, another system we can use in two different ways. One is like a wild dog, we can leave it alone. We don't need to influence it at all. It will develop itself uh, in, in a, a given environment. Or we can train it so we can provide, uh, provide it with treats and uh, have it learn uh, different tricks. Like, a, like an ordinary dog. Yeah, so this prototype can um, do symbolic reasoning um, by using term writing, basically. It can do sub symbolic reasoning. Uh, and some simple classification and reinforcement learning and it builds uh, deep networks uh, dynamically and it uses online, on-shot, one-shot supervised and unsupervised learning for example. So you can look at the code uh, if you want, if you're interested and also add some examples in our paper. Okay, so um, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. So then I'm going to uh, Move on to, to the next talk immediately <laughs> then.